Stress ga ik sowieso hebben de eerste wedstrijd. Uh, ik denk, ik heb sowieso iedere wedstrijd stress. Maar dat is gezonde stress. Maar daar zal het wel nog iets meer zijn in Amerika. Ik heb altijd die passie gehad. Ik zou mijn leven niet kunnen voorstellen zonder autosport. Op mijn zes jaar reed ik mijn eerste kartreis. En als autosportpiloot uh, wil je natuurlijk in het grootste rijden dat er ter wereld bestaat. En, en als Europeanen denken wij, dat is Formule 1. Maar als je dan alle cijfers bekijkt, dan is Nesca veel groter. Anthony Kumpen is doing his last practice laps at the Dutch circuit Raceway Venray. Because in two weeks' time, he'll be making sports history. For the first time, he'll be competing in an American NASCAR race. NASCAR is the second biggest sport in America. They have 75 million fans. Yeah, that is seven, eight times Belgium. It is a dream to come there. Ah, perfect. You know that it's in America. The wheels wisselen, the four wheels. Of how many seconds was it? Yeah, I think within the ten. Within the ten seconds, four wheels, eh? <laughs> Anthony is definitely not a rookie in car racing. He has already won everything there is to win in our country. The 24 hours of Zolder, six times, 10 Belgian titles. But after 20 years, his motivation was gone. Weet je, alles wat ik niet won, was abnormaal. En dan zijn we gaan zoeken naar iets anders. Dan is eigenlijk Nescar zelf naar mij gekomen. Die hebben mij gecontacteerd omdat ze een Europees kampioenschap starten. En uh, ja, ze wilden er ook een Belgisch team en Belgische rijders in. En, en zo zijn we erbij gekomen. Staan ze not of? One year ago. The European NASCAR Championship is brand new and therefore unknown. Also to Anthony, who immediately gets his first surprise. Nee. nee. One month before his race, Anthony's car arrives by mail, in crates. Because all NASCAR cars have identical construction and power. Alles kwam een doos aan, zelfs het stuur, de zetel, alles. De, er was gewoon niks dat, dat klaar was. En uh, die jongens hebben toen echt dag en nacht moeten werken om die auto klaar te krijgen. on the inside, bit of a lock-up there on the inside, but he's made it stick. What an amazing overtaking maneuver there. At the age of 36, the Belgian is the new NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series champion. Congratulated by his team. The European Championship is zeker for me the most overwinning that I've had in my career, because it so unexpected. was. The hope was a top 10 place, and then, yeah, as you then European champion, you start to dream about more things. Anthony will race in the American competition and perhaps even gets to meet his big idol, car racer Jeff Gordon. We sturen een postkaartje van Amerika. Yay! In mijn geval is Jeff Gordon altijd mijn voorbeeld geweest, omdat hij heeft heel jong aan zijn carrière gestart. Hij heeft de NASCAR een beetje veranderd. Hij is nog steeds actief, nog steeds op top, maar hij is echt like een Hollywoodster wordt hij daar behandeld. Ook zijn salaris is zoals een Hollywoodster met 20, 30 miljoen. Off turn two, Jeff Gordon is the new race leader. He has taken the top spot away. Checker flag in the Brickyard 400 to Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon is the Michael Jordan, the Ronaldo of NASCAR. A superstar, a multi-millionaire, and always by his side is his Flemish wife, Ingrid van der Bos. You did it, my friend. How does it feel to be back in victory lane in Indianapolis? I don't think there's a greater feeling as a race car driver and a race team, because that's what it took today. You know, you just, those emotions take over. I have my kids here, I'm like, God, there's nothing better than coming to Victor Lane, especially in one of the biggest races with your family here. Charlotte, North Carolina. 
the capital of Nesca and home of Jeff Gordon and Ingrid van der Bos. Ingrid is a former top model. She met Jeff at a friend's dinner party in the Hamptons, the seaside resort for all the rich and famous close to New York. They've been together for 10 years now. Jeff is in full preparation for his first race of the season. Ingrid dedicates her time to organizing a lunch at the Capitol, a clothing shop with pricey design clothes. Hi, how are you? How are you? Your hair. Thank you. I can do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's interview was so good after the first Oh, I missed so it. Proud of I missed it. Your people. Walk up to she me. used to be on the covers of Vogue and Marie Claire. Now her life is almost entirely dedicated to her husband and children, as is this lunch. We have a lunch with a few girls, and Robert Cavalli showed us in, in the collection of the Zona. We have a lunch, doing, and the proceeds go to the Jeff Gordon Foundation for Children's Cancer, and uh, this is our foundation. And uh, this, this is a good cause, and uh, it's fun to meet you with the and the of all the race car drivers, and we have a dinner. This is cute. I like this one with the ruffly yeah. collar. After lunch, Ingrid wants to show us her house. One of their many houses, because there's no shortage of money here. Uh, here is on the house in Charlotte, North Carolina, where we live together with the children and Jeff. And I would like to go to the house. This is really tough. And we have Ons appartement in New York is bijna klaar. Dat was ook heel fijn om te doen. Dus ik kan niet wachten voor het te zien. Hier is de kamer dan waar we als je een feestje hebt of mensen, men speelt graag spelletjes of kaartspelletjes en het is wel tof om hier te zijn. En hier zijn een paar van Jason trophies. Hij heeft er in totaal 92, maar die passen hier niet. Wij doen samen ook wijn en wijn in San Francisco, Napa Valley. Ik wil ook laten zien, uh, toen Leo geboren was, hadden we een, een wijn voor hem, een witte wijn met zijn naam erop. En dan is de Jeff Gordon ook. At Casa Gordon, Van der Bos employs about 12 staff. Amongst them a personal chef, a chauffeur and a nanny. Nevertheless, Ingrid has her hands full. She also spends a lot of time updating her Facebook page. Because like a real celebrity, she shares her entire life online with the fans, including trips with singer Jennifer Lopez, actor Jamie Foxx or the presidential family. I love this one. It's the one with Michelle Obama and Ella when they signed it. It's really cute. This one is so cute when we were talking all the NASCAR wise when we went to the White House and he just bent down and asked Ella, Who's your daddy up there and what's your name? It's the cutest moment. Ik had niet aan gedacht dat mijn leven zo zou veranderen. Zeker van zich is het zo bal door te komen. Een droomleven? Op het moment wel, ja. <laughs> ja, ik denk het wel. Dat kun je niet van dromen, dat kun je nog niet hopen. Het gebeurt gewoon. Vandaag zou het moeten gebeuren. Hè. We hebben vandaag de, de wedstrijd. Uh, ook de kwalificatie, dus valt allemaal samen op één dag. Dus uh, ik ben heel benieuwd. Het is, het is uh, iets heel spannend. Stressen, daar, daar kan je niet onderuit. Het is daarom ook dat ik morgen eens even een, een beetje ga lopen om een beetje los te komen, een beetje te relaxen. Anthony is walking on holy ground. Because here in Daytona Beach is where NASCAR originated. The first race took place in 1936 with stock cars, cars with modified engines that were used during prohibition to transport alcohol and stay clear of the police. Now it's Antoni's turn. 150 rounds, eh? It's well, 150? 150. Are you ready for it? That's what we'll see. Antoni's wife, Grit, wouldn't want to miss this unique moment for the world. As she points out, she is his mental coach and knows exactly how to handle him. So as nu heb ik hem de laatste dagen eigenlijk niet gezien. 
En dan moet ik hem echt met rust laten. En dan, is het echt, dan weet ik echt wel perfect van, oké, okay, nu moet ik gewoon mijn rug omdraaien. Ik moet er niet tegenaan kruipen. Gewoon slap wel en kussen en that's it. Maar dan zijn er ook stress? momenten... Ja, dat is ja. Oh. Ja, ja. Ja, ja. Maar er zijn ook momenten, bijvoorbeeld tijdens een 24 uur van zolder, dat wij er absoluut niet voor terugdensen om even stom af te laten. Hè? Nee, nee, dan heb ik geen stress <laughs> meer. Dat is, dat is om te ontstressen, moet ja. je af en toe seksen. Hè? Ja. Ja. Ingrid and her two kids are taking a private jet to Florida for the first and biggest race of the year, the Daytona 500. Oh, thank you. What are you going to eat, Ella? Flying in luxury is a must, according to Ingrid. There are 36 races per year throughout the United States. Her kids, including the nanny, usually join her. Uh, it is a, a lifestyle, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like it. Sometimes mama yells. I do? When you're excited. Oh, when papa wins, yes. I jump up and down and then go crazy. All the families of the top racers are now on their way to Daytona Beach. They're part of a show, a spectacle for 14 million television viewers. Voelen ze zich kleine sterretjes? Nee, deze wel, denk ik hier, ja. Zij hij weet ik zeg het niet. Geen idee. What do they do in school, Ella? I take the bus. All the kids ask for my autograph. It's NASCAR's Super Bowl and opening day all rolled into one race, the Daytona 500. It's kind of a dream for us to be here right now. The Daytona 500 is the biggest race of the year in the Sprint Cup, the top series in NASCAR racing. A quarter of a million people cheer on their idols who race the fastest and most dangerous circuit in the United States. Jeff Gordon called this race terrifying, and this is a guy who's won it three times. Ja, het is een beetje indrukwekkender, hè? Als een circuitje wat wij kennen, hè? Het is gewoon een circuit van cars. Anthony will soon meet his big idol, Jeff Gordon. He can get a feel for what it's like at the top, because he will be racing a much smaller circuit in third division. Ga eens kijken naar de coaches. Gaan we de king of NASCAR ontmoeten, hè? Is dat nu zo uw ultieme droom om die echt, ja, Jeff Gordon te worden in NASCAR? Jeff Gordon kan dat niet meer worden. Niemand kan dat worden. Ik maar hier alles kunnen rijden volgend jaar, dat zou wel goed zijn, hè? Je moet altijd naar iets toe werken, hè? Ja, schat, als jij het in je kop hebt, dan zal het er wel van komen. Hallo. You and mine do science. Oké. Okay. Who are you? I'm racing the European NASCAR championship. Oh. I won that one, and uh, I'm racing here in Canada this weekend. Oh, so. beautiful man. Hi, how's it going? Good, and you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you, and. The last Daytona 500? Yeah, I know. Well, when you've done 23 of them. You, you did know, 23 of them. This would be my 23rd, I guess. I'm oh, yeah. still a rookie at 36. Yeah. <laughs> you were a rookie at 16. Hey, or... hey, Harry Gant was a rookie here in 1979 at 40. Yeah? Do you still have a chat? Yeah, she told me in the last race, last year, when I was battling for the championship, she comes at the car and she says, better win this one. I, I don't date losers. And I was there, what? I was. I, I just have to go in my race, and I said... She knows how to motivate hold, you. I've been holding back. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I want to celebrate your championship at the end of the year. Yeah, tell them Come to, to Homestead, then. Yeah, We're yeah, going to yeah. celebrate no matter what, but I hope it's both um, so a great season and, and as well as the end of the, the, my career. Good luck, man. All right, man, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. You're on the right. And for Jeff Gordon, today is a great start to his finish. The pole sitter, his swan song season here. A 50-meter stroll to the opening ceremony of the Daytona 500 is not a piece of cake when your name is Jeff Gordon. Even less so now, 
at the start of his last season. He's surrounded by fans and keeps smiling, but he's quiet, even to Enrit. She knows that on race day, I, I sort of have this, this switch, you know, where I'm, I'm really in the moment of, of what's about to happen. And, and so she realizes that that's not the best time for us to talk about maybe, you know, something coming up next week or a vacation or, you know, a plans or... Or it is know. a good time because you always say yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah what? yes, yes, yes. And I, it took me a while to figure it out. Like, why are you talking to me? But I, I realized it's just he's, he's zoned out and he's focused. The time now to introduce the drivers you'll see chase the American dream in the great American race. A NASCAR race opening ceremony always starts the same way. With a big drum roll, the races are presented to the spectators. But now it's Jeff who captures all the attention. In the number 24 drive to end hunger Chevrolet, three-time Daytona 500 champion Jeff Gordon. Some dramatic pictures here, and for Jeff Gordon, this has to be emotional. He knows this is, he said, his final Daytona 500. Jeff, I can give you 92 reasons <laughs> why you shouldn't be retiring. Can you just give me one, just give me one, why you should be retiring? You know what, uh, it's just it's just the right time. It's the right time in my life. I have these two little ones here uh, with us in the truck that are enjoying this moment as well, and I want to enjoy more moments with them. Uh, that's just one. Our Father, we do thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness. All cameras stay focused on Jeff, even during the prayers. He's used to it. For 23 years, he's been doing talk shows and commercials. Jeff is a brand. Lord, we pray that you will protect our military and we protect the drivers and the pit crew. And thank you again for this day. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almost their entire life is public property, from their engagement to the birth of their children. You have a little less privacy. Um, you, you might be uh, you know, judged sometimes by others, but I think it has far more advantages than disadvantages. Guys, I need everybody to take about five steps back. Please, you guys, we need to breathe. And you were ready for a live in the spotlights, Ingrid? She was oh, born well. for it. <laughs> <That's not true. laughs> um, I don't know. I, I just like before we got married, I kind of lived, had a long career and I did my own thing. It, it kind of got way bigger when we met. It definitely upped my wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so Jeff is 43 and he is still on a winning streak. 92 trophies, four times NASCAR champion, but the last time was in 2001, long before he met Ingrid. Those four championships he's won, I was not there. So I have never experienced it. So I'm craving so much. And for that reason alone, I want that so bad for, for her, for our children, for this team, um, you know, and for myself. Uh, I can't think of any thing that could be uh, more incredible than to go out of this sport on top winning a championship. In the home of the The new Smyrna Speedway, 20 kilometers from Daytona Beach. This is where it all needs to start. Anthony is practicing to qualify for his first race on American soil in third division. It is a strong championship. Everyone who wins this championship wins. Uh, it's two years later uh, by the great young guys, by, by Jeff Gordon. And so, this is not normal. I think that here uh, young guys are from 16 years old who have more experience than me. Anthony has plenty of experience on street circuits, such as Spa-Francorchamps, where you turn left and right. Here, the race circuits are oval-shaped, so you drive in circles. According to his American trainer, that's the biggest challenge. He is kind of starting at zero. I mean, if he was doing road course, he'd probably just kill him. But he's doing oval. Oval's a totally different kind of racing. I mean, it's, it's down and dirty, I might say. 
oval racing gaat veel sneller als, als gewone circuits. Waarom? Omdat je met die, die hellingsgraad in de bocht zit, waardoor je hogere snelheden kan aanhouden. Maar het moeilijkste is, je zit heel dicht bij elkaar. Je rijdt zelfs tegen elkaar. Als er eentje een fout maakt, dan kan het, zoals zij zeggen, pijn doen. At a speed of 200 km per hour, Anthony will race against 25 other drivers. But his practice isn't going great. Jurit is still confident. She's actually already planning the move to the US. Hij heeft alles al bereikt in Europa, in, in de Belgische titels. Het is wel eens helemaal iets nieuws en iets anders. Um, dus ik, ik steun hem daar wel in. Ik push hem daar ook wel in. His team, one of the best in this division, also firmly believes in him. I've had a lot of champions, a lot of rookies, a lot of beginners. And I've just enjoyed my whole career. Uh, but uh, from the bottom of my heart, I feel he's going to be pretty good. There's a lot of young, hungry rookies here. I think we've got over a dozen rookies in this field, so there's going to be a, a lot of carnage in this race. So if he finishes his first ever NASCAR race in America, that's an accomplishment. But before the race, there's the qualifying laps. Anthony has to make his best time in two laps. The fastest time determines his starting position. You have two rounds of qualification. Dus uh, je hebt geen marge voor fouten. Maar we gaan ons niet laten doen. Hè. Uh, I messed up with the braking. Oh, Anthony has to start in position 23, all the way at the back. Ja, het was een slechte qualifying, gewoon een slechte ronde. Uh, ik kreeg niet, kreeg niet de, de wagen waar ik hem wou hebben, dus uh, niks aan te doen. Jeff Gordon is competing for the first spot against 42 racers. The winner gets 1.4 million euros in prize money. Bumper to bumper, they whiz past at 300 kilometers per hour. But the race is long, 200 laps, 800 kilometers, anything is possible. Looks like it, uh, Jeff Gordon's going to take the lead in the 24 and bring the 22 of Logano with him. 15 to 20 laps, I always feel like that's when your car is going to go through that transition of being really good or going to junk. Oh, gosh. Ingrid is watching the race away from the audience in their personal touring van, a luxury villa on wheels, which cost 2.4 million euros. But the tension is just as high. Uh oh, come on, Papa, come on. Oh, Stuart in the wall, and now everybody scatters. A crash is always possible. 14 racers have died here already, and Jeff has also escaped death many times. There are always about 5 to 6 or more crashes in this Daytona. So if you overlive, then it's a lot. But hope and dream that nothing happens and that everything is going to happen. Jeff Gordon's not in a very good spot right there right now. He's drifting back through the middle of the pack here. There's an opening. He's got to take the opening. Oh, no. Come on, Papa. I want him to win. Me too. Oh, oh man. Trouble. Way in the back. Ah! Ah! Jeff Gordon is involved in the back stretch pileup. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Middletown, Connecticut's Joey Logano wins the Daytona 500. Anthony Kumpen. Thank you. Good luck tonight. At the new Smyrna Speedway, the opening ceremony is in full swing. The fans are meeting future Jeff Gordons. Anthony keeps up the good spirit, even though he starts at the back. 
Oh, er zijn nog niet veel die mij hier kennen, denk ik. Maar ik ben aan het proberen te veranderen. Hè. Dat is ons leren kennen. Hè. Hey, nice and smooth, nice and smooth. Here we go, buddy. Thank you. The green flag is about to fly on the 2015 season. We're underway from New Smyrna Speedway. Anthony, here with number 99, goes for a spot in the top 10. He immediately makes a great overtaking maneuver. But he has to avoid many crashes and that slows him down. We see JJ Haley into the wall in the five. I think we're going to see more drivers become more aggressive even as this race advances. Passed a lot of cars so far. He's got a real good car and he's, he's as fast as the leader. It's in the wrong place on the track. Okay, gotta stay focused. We're only gonna have two laps to go. In the last lap, Anthony is in 12th position, but then things go wrong. Looks as though Rico Abreu and Anthony Coupin involved in this. Boy, that, that's terrible for, the, for these drivers to end the race. Anthony ends 14th, but manages to finish the race without major damage. You were the stud out there. <laughs> you done good. The car got better towards the end. No, you got better. <laughs> you had a lot of adversity. You did a good job. I had to swirl around oh, all the wrecks. you did a really good job. Yeah, I did really you were, I thought we were going to come out of that with the top 10 there. Yeah, for a I was hoping for that, so. Good job. I kijk, ik geef nooit niet op. En uh, dat ga ik nu ook niet doen. En ondanks dat ik niet behaald heb wat ik wilde halen, was het toch wel een, een, een droomweekend of een droomweek. Dus uh, ik wil hierin verder en ik ga er hard voor werken. En ze zijn nog niet van mij af, dus uh, ik kom terug. Ingrid and Jeff are flying back to Charlotte. He got stranded in 33rd position, but still takes nearly 600,000 euros home. A top salary for NASCAR's top series. I mean, I was really happy the way the race started and the way it was going. I mean, it's amazing. Our car was awesome. I just, yeah, hey, we got shuffled back on that one restart. Jeff is determined to be champion this year for the last time. And he's also looking forward to his new life as a team coach and sports commentator. I know I have a lot of things on my plate that are going to keep me very busy. And that, uh, you know, that next chapter of my life I'm looking forward to very much, as well as spending more time with, with Ingrid and the kids. That's all fans on this season. I saw him and I thought I'm going to get the career is based and from that door and alles is ongelooflijk geweest and you can get echt gewoon aanvaarden for what it is. Oh, it's been amazing. I mean, I, it's more than I could have ever dreamed of or expected. I was able to compete at the highest level and be very successful at the highest level. It's truly been an amazing experience.